Jack Fletcher, Tough Sports TV. Don't forget to, to like and subscribe the channel, bottom right hand side. And I'm delighted to welcome on today British Light Heavyweight Champion. Come on. <laughs> the only, Craig the Spider Richards. Craig, thanks for coming on the show. No problem. Thanks for having me on. First and foremost, um, did you have a, a good Christmas and New Year? I looked on your Instagram and you spent quite a bit of time in uh, Dubai. Yeah, yeah, you know, I thought about it with this national lockdown. It was a 24-hour decision. I was on the phone to my cousin. I was like, I don't fancy spending New Year's um, staring out my windows, hoping to see some fireworks. So let's try and do something different. We said, let's go to Dubai. We said, all right, looked up flights, accommodation, booked and went the next day. So, yeah, it was very good. Good stuff. So just rewinding back to, to the night that you won the British title uh, against Shaq and Peters, just... Give me your sort of overview and reflection on the uh, the night's events. It was good. Is everything we said, everything you've seen in my previous interviews, everything I said I was going to do, I did. Um, the game plan went perfectly. Um, we decided to change it a little bit this time. And we our plan was to get a late stoppage, which we got. Um, yeah, everything just went to, to plan, you know. Um, we was very confident, um, especially fight week. I've had a lot of fights where I've gone into fights, injured, niggled, ill. And it was a fight where I felt good and I was ready to go. So, yeah, I was very confident and I got the job done. Did yourself and Peter Sims have a strategy before you went into the ring? Or was it a case of sort of a feeling out process? I know yeah. that Chakan's got long levers, got a good range. How, how, how was that? No, that's what I mean. We had a we had a strategy of how I was going to box, exactly how what I was going to do. Um, and each part of the fight, how we planned, it went, you know, and we then later rounds, when it was time to go for a stoppage, we said anything really was going to go for it after eight. Um, I Then in round nine, when I was getting off my stool, I said to Pete, I was going to go for it. I was going to get him out there around 10. He said to me, he's ready to go now. And I said, now? And he said, yeah, go and get him out now. And round nine, we pressed it and got the stoppage. So obviously Pete, third eye, you know, he knows, he knows what he's doing. He knew it was time and it was time and I got him out of there. So, yeah, everything went according to plan, what we planned. I've got to ask you this, Craig, because I don't know myself. Where does the uh, the nickname the Spider come from? Well, basically, every time I was in the ring hitting people, you know, I was catching them from everywhere. They said it felt like they was getting rushed. He didn't feel like he had two arms. And Peter said, this, that's why we called him Spider. <laughs> <laughs> and we went from there. So you've got great wins against Jake Ball, Shaqan Peters, Chad Sugden. You know, things are really opening up for you now in sort of 2021. Yeah. Um, there's obviously going to be a few options on the table. I'm sure Chad Sugden wants the rematch after that draw uh, at your call in 2019. I actually watched that fight ringside. I'm sure Shaqan Peters won't mind another pop at a rematch in future. But the ball's in your court now, Craig. So what's your viewpoint? I think that's the first time I thought I saw your channel, actually. I think it was a Chad Shugden interview. Um, I think the first time Ivan, because I remember originally when he called me out, when he called me out, he did call me out. I think actually, yeah, it was on your channel, I think, because when I was meant to fight Shakan last year and then John Pegg then said he wasn't ready and then I didn't have a fight December the 19th, I remember a few couple of weeks before Eddie had called us and he said to us, oh, there's this guy called Chad. He's been in camp fighting for the 21st. He don't mind pushing his date two days earlier if he gets to fight you on the Matchroom show. And these, I wasn't in camp. Well, I was coming out of campish because obviously Shaq said he wasn't fighting. So I, I just wanted to fight. So I said, oh, yeah. I just said, yeah. I quickly typed the guy in. Chad showed him whatever his name was. At, like I saw him. And I noticed it was your channel where he was like, I would like to fight these guys like Craig Richards. Oh, if I could... I said, oh, so this guy's been calling me out. And it was a while back before this conversation even happened. So I knew this guy must have his eye on me. So I kind of took it thinking it would be a title fight, but then it ended up being an eight-round tick over fight. Um, and then um, I think it was your channel again after I'd fought him. Um, I think he was like, said, oh, I don't think I... He was sitting there on your camera saying, with his clothes, both eyes closed, I don't think I got caught with any clean shots with both his eyes closed the next day. Um, thinking I thought I scored the cleaner shots, but um, yeah, so that's how I actually come across your channel with Chad, funny enough. And then, um, and the thing is, what I didn't like about Chad is like what he said to me in the ring afterwards of how he felt the fight went. It's like the next day he changed his tune 
Um, and I get it. He wants to push for it because he hasn't got nowhere to go. Let's be honest. I gave him an opportunity on the Matchroom show. He had his opportunity. Off the back of that, he then got another opportunity for the British. Then he's he, he's not um, seized these opportunities any of the times. Now he's lost um, again. He's um, in no man's land. I can't personally fight him at this point because you're not allowed to defend your a title against someone off of a loss. And he's not even ranked top 10. So... Chad's like kind of got to work his way back into the mix, and this time he might not be able to get any favors from me. He might have to do it the harder way, uh, everyone else, and put himself in a position. Um, Chacan, I was originally the mandatory for the British. They, him, Hennessy, Chad, Shaq, they kind of cornered me, tried to corner me out, but it was inevitable I was going to get back into my position. So I was actually original mandatory. So, um, as the fight happened anyway. It panned out how it should have. I uh, knocked him out. Um, and there's no better way in boxing to have more of a convincing win. Like, boxing's like the ultimate win, you know. You can win on points or win by KO. So I feel like where I, like, put the lid on it, like, it wasn't like we went to points, it was a split majority decision, one point to me, you know. And everyone's like, oh, I thought Shaq won that, so let's run it back. Uh, I dominated the fight. I dropped him. Uh, hurt him and um, KO'd him um, so I feel like that's something I've really I put a, I closed the door on um, there was no need for a rematch like it wasn't there's nothing questionable of what happened so in them stages of behind my career I kind of put them behind me unless like say for instance Chad starts getting some good wins and puts him himself in the mix then you know I'll, I'll get him out but it's do you know what I'm saying I've kind of pushed on in that part of my chapter, as you say, you look at my CV domestically, there's not, I've won, I beat guys domestically, 14 and 0, 12 and 0, 12 and 1 world ranked top five in the country, 10 and 0, um, you know, and the list goes on from Portuguese champions, etc. And there's not one person, if I ask you myself, I ask you myself, name one person that like. Sorry, just cut out there, Craig. Sorry, I'll just put my phone to call and put my phone on do not disturb so it doesn't happen again. You you, you you just cut off as you was asking me that question. Yeah, sorry. I'm in my back now. No, you're not back. I can hear you, but I can't see you. Yeah, I can't see me. Hold on one second. Camera. Hold on, let me click out and click in. Here we go. But you're back, you're back. You, you, you've gone again. Go. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I'm back. <laughs> so I had a call, so I just locked it and I put it on do not disturb so it doesn't happen again. Um, if I ask you myself, really enough, I just said I, got, I beat guys 14 and 0 top 10, 12 and 0 top 10, 10 and 0 top 10, 12 and 1 world ranked and top 5 in the country, Portuguese champion, etc. If you look at my CV, can you personally name me one person in the light heavyweight division who has got a better CV than I have? Uh, it's well publicised, Craig, that you you know you've you've not had a re easy route to get to where you are today. <laughs> no, not at all. Everybody so, knows that. I feel like at this point, domestically, I must have proven myself um, at this point, and I feel like if you look at all my last opposition. I've accepted their challenge. I didn't call anyone out. They've all called me out from the Sterlings to the Jake Ball tweeted and called me out. The Chad Sugden's called me out. She was online ranting about me saying I'm all this and that and I'm not as good as this and I'm deluded. All these people, they was onto me and I've just accepted every challenge of who thinks they can beat me. At this point in my career, it's about taking your ego out of the game and now thinking about what's good for progress to reach your goals, what we've got in boxing. So for me, I have to like, when the offers get presented, I've got to see which one helps me move forward to achieve more and obviously push towards make that ultimate goal, the world titles, the world championships. That's what I've got to kind of think about now rather than think about an, in, in an egotistical way of him being rude online or him calling me out. I've got to think more strategic now and less of an ego. So it's, as it stands at the minute, not really interested in fighting Shaq. Chad needs to get back on the horse and get some wins under his belt. You must have been absolutely licking your lips when uh, you watched Lyndon Arthur 
and Anthony Yard bat it out. Did you see any chinks in their armour at all? You know, they're both good fighters at the end of the day. I think like they're in the position top fives in the country as well for a reason. Um, do you like every fighter, they've, every fighter's got chinks in their armour and every fighter at this level does things well. Um, it's just like, the, like when I fought Jake Ball, to me, he was a very dangerous opposition. He, as I said in my interviews before I fought him, he's very dangerous. He does things well, but he does, he's got a lot of flaws and I'm here to exploit his flaws and not allow him to have his strong points. Um, and it'll be the same thing for anyone I get in the ring with. Um, I like both of them, Lyndon Arthur and I like Anthony Yard. Me and Anthony Yard's been friends from year, for, for for many years. Um, and I know that if we're talking about domestically, Lyndon Arthur, he obviously won the Commonwealth and the WBO Continental. I've won the WBO Continental with British. I think it's never all people always going to put our names to go. But I think like if we did end up getting called to fight, it would probably make sense for the pair of us. There's stuff to gain for me, stuff to gain for him. You know, like he's got belts. I ain't got, I've got belts. He ain't got. So I think domestically at the moment, we're kind of like beneficial for each other if the fight was to be made. And I'm sure if we got a phone call, I got a phone call, he got a phone call and they presented it, we wouldn't, we'd probably both be like, yeah, that's a that's a good fight for a pair of us. So yeah, that when you say stuff like Lyndon, it would make sense in the grand scheme of where I'm, where I'm at in my career, as I explained earlier. Do you think looking at the logistics of everything, there might be a distinct possibility that that fight could actually be made at some point this year then? Yeah, of course. Like, um, I think in terms of beneficial for the fighters and the teams, yes. In terms of the politics of Warren, Eddie, um, I'm not sure um, how it works. I'm not part of the business side of it. Like, I just do my job and fight. So... I haven't been put in a situation like this. Not like he's a mandatory or a mandatory. So I don't know how it kind of all works or if the fight could happen or not. It's just like, if it did get presented and it could, I'm sure we both would probably be rubbing our hands. So we'll see. We just don't know. Maybe there'll be other options. Maybe him, maybe someone else. You, you don't know. <laughs> That's the good thing about boxing. But it's definitely a fight that would be beneficial if it got presented. I think it's a fight that the boxing fans want to see. Hypothetically, you do get the opportunity to fight Lyndon Arthur. Looking at his skills, his abilities, his attributes, his jab, his uh, shot selection, his footwork. How does this fight pan out? Craig Spider Richards versus Lyndon Arthur. What happens? I believe I win. I definitely believe I win. Uh, I think Lyndon's a great fighter, but I think I'm a great fighter. And I just I believe in myself. I believe in my skills. Um I, I don't believe anyone does anything better than I do in terms of... I, I feel like I'm an all-round fighter. Uh, I've got a good jab. I've got good movement. I can box. I can fight. I can punch. I've got a good chin. Um, I've got good ring IQ. So I believe with all of that. Um, and I've got a good team. Um, so, yeah, I, I believe in myself 110%. I know that you can't look past your next opponent, Craig, but where do you want to be this time next year in your career? Obviously, you're coming into your prime now, you know, British champion. You, you, you've got the world at your feet at the minute. You've got, you're going to have so many opportunities over the next sort of six to 12 months. Um, where do you want to be in 12 months down the line? Well, the good thing is I can have this conversation because I currently don't have a next opponent as it stands at the second. So these are the sort of times I can reflect and look at where I want to be. And I look at where I am at now, you know, WBA Continental Champion, British Champion, um, World Ranked Top 10 in the IBF, World Ranked Top 10 in the WBA, um, I think number eight or something. So there's options pushing towards that way. You know, once you're top 10, you can get a phone call anytime, even as a voluntary for a world title. You know, a few fights in, you'll be a mandatory for a world title. So um, that's always the ultimate goal, you know. Um, I look like British Champion is... is means a lot because it's historic in our country but when you come into the game you don't come in saying like you know one day i aspire to be the british champion you know you aspire to be the world champion that's what you come in the game this is why i get up early it's why i grind hard every day to become world champion and change my situation and the future of my family and myself so of course that's what i'm looking at my eyes are set strong on that and that's what i want good stuff um you've got phenomenal power for the weight you know, you've got a great boxing IQ, like you say, but Craig, what do you what would you say that you personally need to to work on in the gym to to get even better than you already are? 
there's always things to work on. There's loads for me to work on. Uh, loads for me to work on. Um, do you know, I've been really itching to get back to drone ball because there's things that are, are in my head that I want to we we'll try and working on improving on boxing the game that you're always improving and always getting better. I believe like um, in the last year there was like certain fundamentals that I needed to clean up and I've cleaned them fundamentals up now. So it's just about now going to the next stage and I kind of leave that to my team. Like when we come back in camp, they tell me, look, this is what you've been doing. This is what you did wrong. You don't do this very well. We need to work on this. Da, 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 da. They're very straightforward with me. Peter doesn't doesn't play he doesn't he's not on this ha like nice guy stuff to, to to hold your feelings he's a very realist he's a realist he's direct to me and um i listen i'm a student of the game and so what he feels like i can improve on is more what i improve on you know when i'm at a camp i might be practicing certain things of myself what i think when we get into that um gym at his time to dictate to me of what i need to work on and what i need to improve on so until he sits down and says right this is very uh, detrimental you, you you improve on this I, I won't know to the full extent still my team go and tell me just talking about peter sims how influential has he been in your career thus far very 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 influential you know um it's been a journey where he's um if he wasn't with me or influential in the way years, maybe I wouldn't be at this point or somewhere in my career. Maybe I would have a different route. We don't know how it would have panned out, but you know, he's, he's really trained me, got me ready for every opportunity. He's um, done everything he can. Um, he's got me out there. We've gone on big stages together. You know, we've had opportunities. Um, he's trained me hard. He's, he, we've, it's like, you know, as the years go on, we've bonded closer and closer. You know, we, when I'm in fight camp, like first week or two, I stay at his house. Um, so I live with him last couple of weeks. So he keeps a close eye on me. There's no mistakes from the top to the bottom. Um, yeah, he's a really like he he really looks after me, and um, he's had a massive impact on my career. If I'm honest, he knows me quite well as well. So he knows when I'm dipping in camp, when I'm thingy in camp, when my mindset is a certain way or pull me get back on it, like, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that. So um, he doesn't allow me to slip. Like, even if you wanted to slip, he wouldn't allow you to slip. So I'm quite self-motivated anyway. I'm very self-driven. Like, I'm not a sort of fighter you need to tell, oh, come to the gym or uh, have you been training? I'm the sort of fighter you have to ring to say, oh, sl slow down, you're, do <laughs> you're doing too much. And I think at the start of my career, I never, not I didn't listen as much. I did listen, but I used to take things into my own hands at times. Like, he will say, all right, tonight, go and rest. I'm like, yeah, no problems. And I'm out there doing a 10-mile run. And then before you know it, I'm burning out for the fight. And he said, listen, you must listen. I'm not, I'm telling you for a reason. And and then he would, um, I'd start listening and seeing the results changing. And then I've understood that you got to listen. Craig, you're British champion now. Uh, we're at the start of a brand new year. You know the competition is. In your heart of hearts, how far do you feel now that you can you can take your boxing career? Are we talking world title level? Million percent, million percent. I have no doubt in my head that I can. Do you know what the thing is with the Shakan fight? Yeah, I have made improvements. I'm always in the gym anyway. But the stuff people saw on that night is nothing different that I've been doing in the gym for ages. And the thing is, it's just like I'm I'm so much better than I've showed the public. So if anyone on my team or people who's watched me in the gym or people who's come down or seen spars or people who come and sparred me from other teams, sometimes people are like, how are you not classed as the best light heavyweight? How does the public not know how good you are? And I say to them all the time, because I've not demonstrated a lot of me on fight night. So they can only go by what they've seen under the lights. So I now need to, in lockdown, Last year, once I got ill and everything, I was sitting there, I was in bed and I was like, do you know what? I really reflected on my career. And if you look at my career, I've blown hot and cold because like, if it's a, not a big fight, it's a tick over six or eight rounder, I'll just go there, get paid and go home. But if it's a big title fight and it's something to gain, then I get up for it. So people looking at my tick over fights and looking at my title fights are like, we're in that title fight, it was red hot. But in that tick over fight, mm, he's okay. And I said to myself, I can't go out there a certain time just to go and tick the register. I need to start showing people time and time again my ability. Otherwise, you become a gym fighter. And that's why Pete said, this time you've got to go and show 
some of your abilities on the night because otherwise people can't see how good you are. And that's what I've done with the cha um, Shakam fight. This is why I showed different dimensions. I showed my boxing ability a bit. You know, he's a six foot six, six foot seven boxer. Everyone's like, well, you just got to get on his chest and get to him because you ain't going to outbox him. I showed I can outbox these guys. I, I can slip, I can move my feet, I can hit them, I can throw combination punches. I showed different aspects of me. And I believe now, if I keep doing that, I'll be prepared, preparing myself to go for that world title and then go and then really get 100% of me on that night um, to go out and win a world title. Because you look at that British level, there's not much stages above it being the top of the British level. And I've come out of a British title fight, supposedly the underdog, against an unbeaten fight without a red mark, bruise, scratch. No, not one bit of wear and tear. So it shows the levels. It's not like I went two for nail or had to go through gear four, five, and six. I didn't really come out of gear one and two. So you can see that my level is above where I'm at at the moment. I just need to go and keep practicing and demonstrate that as I move on. Craig, who do you want to fight next? Um, if I had the option of everyone, it would probably be a guy towards the world levels. Um, there's Kadnishi, there's I wouldn't even mind. I know people say I'm mad, but if I got the phone call for Bivol, I would jump in there. I wouldn't mind because I feel like Baterbiev is levels above everyone right now. He's elite. He's a monster. But I don't believe that bridging the gap between the top domestic guys now in Britain and the fighters like maybe Bivol or Joe Smith Jr. is that much far of a difference. I do believe there's a massive gap between the level of us and uh Baterviev maybe right now but I believe these other guys are beatable so if they ring my phone I'll be there <laughs> good stuff um Craig any any sort of sponsors you want to thank any shout outs at all just before we wrap up 100% I would love to shout out Lewis Access they have been with me for ages on board you know they helped me through camp um the meal team always providing my meals um four way elite I would like to find me up um, they've been on a sponsor on board and consistent. I'm really appreciative of them. Sean the Print Town, can never forget Sean. He's always there supporting. Um, wait, don't let me forget any of my main sponsors. Capital Waste, they are supportive. You know, they help me through camps as well. Um, so there's Sean, Elite Fleet, Lewis Access. The mill team. I love my Kyra and my physio as well. <laughs> He's done a tremendous job on board. We brought him on board for the last camp. He's been doing a tremendous job um, with me as well. And obviously Matt, my strength coach. And also, I would love to shout out my supporters, my loyal supporters who supported me from the off. And some of you have jumped on board during the journey, but you've been consistent. And without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do it, especially my family as well. And obviously my team, everyone down at Matchroom Boxing. Come on. If you enjoyed the interview today, click on the bottom right hand to subscribe. Craig Richards, it's been fantastic talking to you. Thanks for coming on to, to Tough Sports TV today. No problem. Well, I'm glad I'm on here today now. I only usually see your channel when it's usually my enemies slating me off is when I see you usually <laughs> pop up but now it's me on the channel <laughs> you're the method behind the madness mate oh I bet <laughs> Craig it's been lovely talking to you and uh, I wish you best of luck in your next fight let's keep in touch and thanks for coming on the show again mate no problem good speaking to you lovely cheers Craig thank you <laughs>